Hi, I'm Matthew Lippincott, and I'm a designer here in Portland, Oregon, and a volunteer with Flush, Public Hygiene Lets Us Stay Human. In addition to our public restroom advocacy over the past year, we've been investigating emergency response, uh, and through my studio, MDML, and in collaboration with uh, the Pacific Northwest College of Arts Collaborative Design Program, our hands-on research has led to a graduated plan of emergency sanitation response at the household level. Sanitation is often an afterthought in emergencies, with food, water, housing, and reuniting families the top priorities. But in the long run, sanitation is, a cr is crucial to keeping one physical disaster from turning into several health disasters. The fundamentals of sanitation are hand washing and the containment and treatment of human excreta. In short, sinks and toilets. In the event of an emergency, especially a Cascadia subduction event, sewers and water service are likely to be disrupted. Pipes are rigid, and when the earth moves, they shear, crack, and owing to liquefaction, they can also float. These movements destroy the careful grading of gravity-drained sewers and open them up to leaks. Smaller earthquakes have done substantial damage to pipe sewer water and gas infrastructure. And uh, the plan we've developed was based on the experiences in two recent earthquakes, one in Christchurch, New Zealand, and the other in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Haiti provided the most gruesome example of what happens when sanitation fails. International aid workers brought in by the UN introduced cholera into Haiti for the first time since the 19th century. And without proper toilets and access to clean water, it became epidemic. Such epidemic is unlikely here, but containing and preventing the spread of disease is vital. While city, state, and federal authorities will do their best to restore service and provide portable toilets, households should provide their own plan as well. In Christchurch, Many households dug latrines, an option not available to us in Portland because of our soils are inappropriate for pit latrines. In areas of Christchurch without pit latrines, the New Zealand Permaculture Guild adapted a simple dry toilet system that I will show you today. It is based on the World Health Organization guidelines for the containment and treatment of excreta and minimizes waste handling. You can find our guidelines in the Sewer Catastrophe Companion, printed in collaboration with the Downtown Chinatown Neighborhood Association. It starts with two five-gallon bucket toilets, some cover material, and a simple hand-washing solution. The sink can be uh, foaming soap and our tap-up sink, which we recommend uh, building in the Sewer Catastrophe Companion, or as simple as a bottle of water and some soap. Next, there are the five-gallon bucket toilets, or the Christchurch no-mix twin toilets. One for poop, one for pee. The toilet seats here are from Reliant, and they can be found at Army Navy stores like Andy and Bax, as well as online for $10 to $20. You can also make your own following the plans in the sewer catastrophe companion. Pee and poop are separated because urine is not a significant disease risk. And by containing and dealing with it separately, diseases, smells, and risks are minimized. If you need to poop, sit on the poop toilet. It can take a little pee, and if you need to pee, sit on the pee toilet. After using the poop toilet, cover with some carbonaceous material to cover the smell. This can be easily stored as uh, animal bedding, coconut husks, sawdust from a nearby sawmill, or coffee hulls. All of these are available locally. Paper will also work, although not as well. Controlling the pee bucket odor can be dealt with by um, emptying it every day or by filling the bucket with loose wood chips or other carbon material. As a temporary measure, these twin toilets will get a family through the first three days, at which point we hope another option will be provided. If not, they can be emptied into curbside bins, separate ones for pee and poop. A family of four can empty to their curbside bins for up to five weeks, given the city time to arrange pickup. After the five-week period, the Sewer Catastrophe Companion lays out plans for composting poop and pee to World Health Organization standards allowing neighborhoods to set up their own treatment systems in the event that they have to. Hopefully it won't come to that, but the procedures outlined are currently being used by SOIL, an Oxfam-funded project in Port-au-Prince, serving 20,000 Haitians, and are a model for disaster response. Remember to protect yourself and your fellow Portlanders. In the event of an emergency, wash your hands before meals, before and after treating to a medical problem, and after using the toilet. And make sure you also have a toilet available. Thank you.